Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Blackmagic Fusion. And today we're going to be taking a look at building our own HSV Kia. Now, what is an HSV Kia? Well, it uses hue, saturation and value to isolate a particular colour. So unlike a green or blue screen Kia, we can, we can key out any colour we choose, not just those two colours. So obviously in Fusion, as you, I'm sure you know, you can use the chroma key. So let's have a look at that over here. And we can pick our color and we get this sort of very, very sharp initial result. We can soften that off. Uh, we can leave that as it is, or we can blur the matte like that. So this is actually quite useful. Uh, we don't have to use chroma for this. We can use color. And again, we get a slightly different result. Again, we can just sort of blur it and we get this sort of result. Now, I'm not saying the chroma key isn't very useful. What I'm just going to point out is that just as between these two different options for the chroma key, they give you a slightly different result. The key that we're going to build gives a different result again. And, you know, depending on your use scenario, it might be useful. So let's get started on this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a background node and this background node is going to be my color picker. So I've just renamed it that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to convert both this color wheel image and our color picker to the HSV color space. So to do that, we're going to use a color space node and the conversion type is going to be to color. You'll notice we've got a variety of different color types. And you could, for example, use a hue, a luminance, saturation, uh, which is you'll, you'll often find as well. Uh, but we're going to stick with HSV for this. Okay, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an instance of that. So Command C, Command Shift V. So I want to bring that down here and pipe the color picker output into it. So let's just have a quick look at what that has done to our image. So that's the full color image. But if we look at the red, we're getting the hue. If we look at the green, we're getting the saturation. So these are expressed as black and white values. And if we switch to, to blue, which is the value, you'll see that it's all white. And that's because our color wheel, if I switch back to color, it's got full value for it's got 100% value, so that's why that's all full white. But in a typical scenario, that value will be a useful, uh, the converted blue channel will be a useful thing to be able to control. Okay, so let's get on to building our Kia. And to do that, we are going to add a custom tool. Let's take the output of the converted color wheel image into the image one input and the output of the color converted color picker into the image two input. So let's get to work on this custom tool. First of all, I'm going to come to the intermediate tab and I'm going to set up three intermediate values. What we want to do is we want to set up the difference between the color picker color and the, uh, the image color. So in order to do that, we are going to type abs, open brackets, R1 minus R2, close brackets, and then the same for the green channel, but abs, open brackets, G1 minus G2, close brackets. And the same for the blue, abs, open brackets, B1 minus B2, close brackets. And then in our channels, I'm going to type one minus open brackets, I1 plus I2, plus I3, close brackets. So what we're doing is summing the those three calculations and using the output to go into the red channel. And I'm going to copy that and I'm going to add it to the green and the blue. So now if we look at our custom tool, we're not seeing anything, but that's because our color picker is picking black. So let's uh, select a different color like so. Uh, so we need to switch to the dual view for that. And now let's look at the custom tool. And I think you can see we've got something that sort of looks right, but 
it's got a problem, when, which is this line here. And that's because at this point, the, uh, the red, the hue channel, flips from zero to one along that line. And we need to find a way of avoiding that issue. And we can do that in our custom tool. I'm going to come back to the intermediate tab. I'm going to take that red value and copy it and then paste it into intermediate four. And into this intermediate one field, I'm going to type a new expression. So that's min open brackets i4, which is that red calculation down there, comma one minus i4 close brackets. And now that's looking much healthier. So now I can take my color picker and we can move anywhere around the wheel and that's starting to look better. So we need to be able to control the relative amounts of the HSV that go into the making up the key. So to do that, we're going to come back to our intermediate tab and we're going to add a multiplier for each of these. So for the intermediate one times N1 at the end of that, for intermediate two times N2 at the end of that, and for intermediate three times N3 at the end of that. Now it's all gone white, and that's because we need to reset these number values. So I'm going to type one for each of those first three. Those are other numbers. You can get rid of them if we can come over to the, um, the conf config tab. We can just remove those. And just as I've done here, you can rename them hue saturation value. So when we come back here, we've only got those three controls and they've got the right names. Now, as I mentioned, value is not going to do anything in this particular instance because the value is one, so we can't affect that. But for example, if we increase the saturation value, we can isolate more of the saturation, which of course, it gets more saturated out towards the edge. That's why we're picking up more of the edge. And most importantly, if we start increasing that hue value, we are selecting a finer and finer area like so. And so now we've got a really nice set of controls that we can start using to key with. So at this point, let's switch out our color wheel image and use this uh, test image instead. And then we can use the color picker to isolate a particular color. So that, that little present there, isolate that. We can use our controls to, to refine how that works. Now, at the end of this chain, we can add a brightness contrast. So let's look at that. You can see that by adjusting the low and high, I can isolate the area that I want and then increase the intensity of the actual key itself. So what I'm going to do here is just add a color corrector. Uh, let's take our original image without any of that color space correction done on it. Let's take our brightness contrast and pipe it into the effect mask input. Let's come over to settings and switch the channel to luminance. And now if you look at our color corrector output, we can affect the color of that present and this swatch that's got the same color. So we've actually nicely isolated that. If we wanted to, we could instead isolate her skin color like so. It's, it's a nice soft key that's actually picking up the transparency here. Uh, pretty well on the on that veil on her arm. Sorry, didn't mean to change her coloured skin to this particular colour, but you, you can see that we've got a nice gentle transparency there. That's much harder to achieve with the with the chroma key. So I've just taken a simple instance where we've used a colour corrector, but we could also use a uh, we we could also use this to key her over the top of something else, for example. So I brought in this landscape shot uh, so we can work on that. Let's remove that color corrector. And after that brightness contrast, let's add a new custom tool. And let's pipe the output of the original image without the color space conversion into the image to input. So now let's come to our channels 
I'm going to type C1 times C2, and I'm going to copy that and paste it into the green and the blue. So now that gives us this. And what we need to do is we need to use the R1 input, which is the which is just one of the channels of the mat itself. Use that as the alpha. So type R1 for that. So now we've got her keyed out like that. And we can just merge her over the top of the background like so. Scale her up. Uh, there you go. We've got a we've got a key. And as I say, you know, you've got control with this uh, brightness contrast as to the density of the mat. So just a couple of final points. I would recommend on this brightness contrast tool that you enable clip black and clip white just to avoid any potential out of range values. And if we wanted to blur the mat, I would do that before that brightness contrast. So let's add a blur node there. And now we can blur the result like that. So there's our key going through the brightness contrast. Obviously, the brightness contrast will, will affect the, the result of the blur, and that's, that's the way around that you want it. So I hope that's been useful. As I say, you know, you won't necessarily want to use this all the time, but uh, you, you might find the chroma keys does the job. But I kind of think this is actually, in many ways, for a lot of purposes, it's more flexible and... There's a lot that you could do to, to, to refine the process that I won't go into here. So thanks very much for watching.